ask ya, I won't put it past ya I said ride away, but you sank the ship so fast, yeah You weren't on my side, because that would make you mad, yeah I ain't gotta lie, girl, I loved you more than past, yeah But thinking about it Six side trips down to see you by the coast I would say I love looking better than for most I used to show you picture to my friends just to boast About your energy, Ooh, yeah, and that 4.0, oh, yeah Never thought I had to look again. Way too focused on your ex and them. Really think you need some better friends. I've been feeling different ever since. You won't ever find a better man. Loved you way more than you ever knew. Now I'm looking for a better you. I said, whoa, I'm on my own. We spoke on the phone. That's all she wrote. She said, leave me alone. So I'ma go. Spending all our time and we went for broke. But you could have made it last year. I won't put it past you. I said ride away, but you sank the ship so fast, yeah You weren't on my side, because that would make you mad, yeah I ain't gotta lie, girl, I loved you more than past, yeah But thinking about it Six side trips, come and see me in the veil Making love to you first to show you how I feel We connected on a level, thought that I could never feel yeah. I was so impressed with you But you know everything is good as an end Look what you created, now we're in this happy stance I'm convinced you never really loved me Truly like you said you did It won't be your friends that would be there in the end No, it could've been me, it could've been me It could've been us, we could've been free A date in New York, yeah, a date on the beach Nobody else would know what that means Except you and me I swear that I meant it, I get it, you needed your peace But do not forget it, you need a release You cried in my arms, I need you to breathe Where were you at when I needed you, please? Oh, when I needed you And I said, whoa We spoke on the phone, that's how she wrote She said, leave me alone, so I'm a go Spending all our time and we went for broke But you could have made it last year Put it past you, it's the right away. Sink the ship so fast, you were on my side. No, no, no. Music for me was never just about which DJ played my song or which label was cool. It's always been much more than that. Music has touched generations, liberated cultures, made people fall in love, made people cry. It's true emotion.
everybody. Welcome to tonight's live stream. We have a, a kind of, I would like to say it's an epic battle, but after smelling one of them, I don't even think it's going to be close. I think this is going to be a, a straight down drag out beat up vibe. But first, I want to get into a little bit of what we have here. First of all, today we know Scotch is being like kind of like single malt dominant. That's what the super premium is. That's what everyone talks about. When in reality, Scotch's history is more is more closely aligned to blends than it they are to single malts. We don't actually see a rise of single malts until the 1960s when you have a woman named Bessie Williamson coming over to the United States and marketing things for the Scotch Whiskey Association. She's most known for being you know being the kind of like uh, the heroine of of um of lafroy you can read about her in my book Bur uh, whiskey women the untold story of how women save bourbon scotch and irish whiskey now so what people are normally drinking from a scotch perspective were actually blends today we talk a lot about single malts but blends were what people were drinking and gilby's was basically kind of like a i don't want to say a bottom shelf but it certainly wasn't top shelf it was such uh so poorly so poorly marketed that these the, the advertisements of the time, they couldn't even give the poor Gilby Scotch a photo. So this poor little guy of something that was ripped off of an airplane in the 1960s and set in some dude's basement until I bought it uh, at an estate sale some time ago. And I, uh, I opened it, and as I opened it, I smelled it, and it just smells god-awful. I don't, you know what, if you guys will allow me the pass, I am not drinking that. That is just, it's, it smells like this has been sitting next to like a, a dude's cat, like a dead, it smells like a dead cat meets, um, you know, fermented chewing tobacco. So if you ever want to know what a dead cat rotting, smelling, you know, fermenting next to, uh, you know, chewing tobacco, Gilby's eight-year-old blended scotch from the 1960s in some dude's basement that I bought it from. Uh, this is your ticket to, to heaven. So I am actually not going to taste that. Going straight into the uh, the Suntory. Now this is from uh, the 19, this is from the 1980s. You would actually see this, this bottle uh, throughout the throughout uh, the la you know the 70s but if you take a notice there is this this bottle doesn't have that little that special uh, decal and it says an s as an sr on there so you'll see a lot of these bottles pop up and people mistake this one all the time uh, for a bottle in the 60s and 70s this is actually one from uh, the 1980s now the japanese whiskey scene their history doesn't really start on a commercial level until the 1920s. So they actually are very new to whiskey making in comparison to the rest of the world. Now here's kind of the dirty secret of Japanese whiskey. They actually don't distill a lot of the stuff that they bottle. They import stuff and they blend it there. They're great blenders. There's nothing wrong with that. But there's a lot of secrets behind, um, behind Japanese whiskey that people like Dave Broom have been helping open up and helping them kind of like understand that the rest of the world really wants to know how your distilling styles are done. If you want to read more about uh, Japanese whiskey, I highly recommend my good friend's books, uh, Dave Broom. I think you'd like it. Go check it out. So here we are. I'm going to give give this a nose, very honey forward. Mm, really nice. By the way, I did notice in the chat that people complaining that I uh, I chose to do a live stream up against the NFL draft. Uh, I will say that uh, I get it. I uh, kind of want to know who's been picked. But I also have to share, I just, um, I love doing these every night. I love hanging out with you guys, whether it's five people joining or 500. This is Sipping a whiskey with you all, even if it's not bourbon, it's, it's a lot of fun. I see there's a lot of cigar talk here. Mm. Yeah, a lot of um, a lot of honey on that. A little bit of grapefruit. 
And um, so like Chinese allspice. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's really good. Really fruity, really floral. Um, very pleasant. It's not complex or overly, uh, overly like knocking me off my socks, but it's, it's very tasty. Now, I did know, I did have a feeling that, um, I did have a feeling that I want, I would want to taste something else up against this. Um, and I wanted to, I wanted to check out how Johnny Walker Black would compare to Centauri. Now, Johnny Walker Black is a is a twelve year old. Uh, this is a twelve year old blend. Uh, you can find this in in, in a lot of stores. Uh, sometimes it's in a it's in a box with a couple glasses, so they make really nice gifts. But it's affordable. You can get it for under you know like I think 65, 70 bucks. Okay, so this is an interesting nose. Off the top, right off the top, I am smelling a lot of uh, a lot of grain, um, and, and like a hint of like um, petrol, or you know, petrol is a is basically like a light, like a light fragrance of of gasoline. So it has kind of like a a light fragrance of gasoline smell there. It's not good or bad. It's just it's just it's an aroma. Let's see what we got here. Hmm. Well. It's definitely interesting coming um definitely interesting uh coming from this um from this approach of something that was very soft very mild very elegant very honey forward to basically something that is kind of in that same league but just a notch up in terms of like additional flavors the johnny walker black has has uh, some depth to it, whereas the the Centauri was kind of like, you know, flat after like a couple of flavors. It was just there and fell fell down. It was it was very very nice, uh, but real uh, you know Graham's got a good point here. High malt malt content here, and indeed, indeed. Yeah, Alan brings up a good point. You really do not find Johnny Walker uh, black. This is the uh, this is the uh, this you you can find this everywhere. Uh, it's really it's like the in the world it's like the number number two. This goes neck and neck with uh, Jack Daniels in the marketplace, and there's a lot of belief that Diageo actually has George Dickel. Just so they can lob mortars over at uh, um, <laughs> at Jack Daniels from time to time, so kind of funny there. Okay, so coming back to the Centauri, it's it's so floral, it's so fruity, so much honey there. Now coming back to the walker. Yeah, there's just simply no comparison here. There's simply no comparison. The the Johnny Walker Black Label 12 year old uh, hands down beats this um, 1988 Japanese whiskey, and I didn't even taste the uh, the scotch that the 1960 scotch that smells like a dead cat next to fermenting tobacco spit. So 
if you forgive me for that one i won't i won't be tasting that after i smelled it but uh, johnny walker black a fantastic pour highly recommend this uh, <laughs> i have a funny comment here like the gasoline no why do i do this myself uh look i'm 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 not drinking the whole thing i'm just tasting a little bit but you know, you smell a lot of things in whiskeys. You can, like, if you smell uh, a peated a peated whiskey, you know, from Isla, I mean, you may very well smell diesel. You may smell diesel. But when you taste it, you obviously know that's not diesel. And so, like, having some experience with whiskeys, you, you don't get a, you don't get a sense of, um, how should I put this? You don't get scared off because of something you smell. Unless it smells like a fermenting, you know, dead cat, that then you get then you get a little, little nervous there. So guys, this is gonna this is gonna be a short one tonight, uh, for many reasons. One, we have the NFL draft going, but if you all have any questions, uh, let me know. But the main reason why I'm cutting it short tonight, I'm having a, a short live, is simply because I'm trying to um, pace myself tomorrow night. Tomorrow night is the big one. I've got um, I've got my Pappy. Um, I got the Pappy versus uh, Old Fitz. So this is this is tomorrow night here. This is my my Pappy Van Winkle, fifteen year old, up against a, a bottle of the um, Old Fitzgerald Prime. That is going to be tomorrow night. So I'm trying to, you know, pace myself a little bit so I don't uh, try to get a good night's sleep tonight so my palate's fresh and and I really and I got it uh, I got it all going on. So tonight is definitely a a short live, but thank you all for coming. Let's um, let me know if you all have any questions between now and then. And for the love of God, send me the photos of you all and what you're drinking so I can put them up in the pre-show of, um, you know, before I come on. So make sure you're sending me those photos. You can just hit me up at assistant at fredminnick.com. Do that, and uh, we'll sip some whiskey together uh, very, very much soon. So Danny, Danny, like Danny, if, if Danny Lynn wants to pull out his uh, pappy 15-year-old tomorrow, He's going to be the winner of the show, definitely. So pull out your pappies. Uh, 500 Pizzas is going to be here. And um, let's uh, let's all get a good night's rest. Let's be safe and healthy. Don't lick trash cans. Don't lick handrails. And remember, it's very important to remember this. Vodka sucks unless it's being used for hand sanitizer. So that's going to do it for tonight. Thank you all so much for joining me. I am excited to uh see danny lynn uh drinking his pappy 15 year old tomorrow cheers everybody be safe out there cheers